Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about theory in which none of the living characters we followed in the series is Azra High, because the prince that was promised was Rhaegar Targaryen, then his brother and John's father, who died during Robert's rebellion. George R. R. Martin has hinted this before, when he said that he always wanted to write a story where the grand hero of the story dies or loses at the beginning, and the aftermath of it. As years have gone with no additional input from George R. R. Martin himself, fans have gotten very creative in theorizing about Jon Snow or Danny being the prophesied savior. Some are even claiming that supporting characters like the Hound Davos or even Gendry are Azra High. But if this theory that I'm going to introduce you with in this video is true, then the prince has already come and gone, and nobody even noticed. According to this theory, Jon Snow may not be Azra High, although he might still have a connection to the prophesied savior of Westeros. For those unfamiliar with the prophecy, here's a quick version. During the first long night centuries ago, a hero named Azra High saved Westeros from death and chaos by driving the White Walkers far into the north using a flaming sword Lightbringer. According to ancient prophecies that were written down in Ashai over 5000 years ago, following a long summer when the stars bleed and the cold breath of darkness falls heavy on the world, Azra High is to be reborn and destined to defeat the darkness once again. It says that Westerosi champion will return as the prince that was promised, being reborn amid smoke and salt to wake dragons from stone, and reforge the great sword Lightbringer that defeated the darkness those thousands of years ago. If all tales are true, a terrible weapon forged with a loving wife's heart. Great power requires great sacrifice. Here's the exact thing written in the ancient book of Ashai. There will come a day after a long summer when the stars bleed, and the cold breath of darkness falls heavy in the world. In this dread hour a warrior shall draw from the fire a burning sword, and that sword shall be Lightbringer, the red sword of heroes, and he who clasps it shall be Azra High come again, and the darkness shall flee before him. If Azra High is the same as Prince that was promised, he or she is born of the line of Ares II and Rella, and he or she is the Song of Ice and Fire according to Rhaegar Targaryen. Most fans believe this hero to be either Jon or Danny, and I see why. There are too many clues and hints supporting both. After a long summer, Azor High will be reborn amid smoke and salt, prophecy says. This could point on Jon's resurrection. He was reborn after he was stabbed to death by the Night's Watch traitors. So here we have rebirth. But what about the part of smoke and salt? Well, in my opinion, the wall could represent the salt. Since in the books, it's told that the wall contains the salt, quoting from the books, the door's upper lip brushed against the top of Bran's head, and a drop of water fell on him and ran slowly down his nose. It was strangely warm and salty as a tear. Now, this sentence confirms the fact that the wall is salty, but could the salt of the wall represent the salt in the prophecy? Well, it could in my opinion. Now, let's try to solve the smoke part, since the prophecy says that Azra High will be reborn amid smoke and salt. Well, the smoke part also came true. Do you remember that Melisandre, while she performed a resurrection ritual to bring John back to life, do you remember that Melisandre cut locks of John's hair and tossed the curls into the flames, after which we saw the smoke? So we got smoke as well. This is the only part of the prophecy, but this is not the only part that matches with the prophecy. It said that Prince that was promised should have the blood of the dragon, should be born of the line of the Mad King Aerys Targaryen and Rhaella Targaryen, which John is. John is the son of Rhaegar Targaryen, and therefore he is born of the line of Aerys and Rhaella, who are in fact John's grandfather and grandmother. Also in the show adaptation, who showrunners know from George R. Martin himself who Azra Hai is, it's revealed in the 10th episode of season 6 that John was born under a bleeding star, which fulfills the part of the prophecy which says that Prince of was promised will be born under a bleeding star. As we could see, Eddard Stark entered the Tower of Joy with a bloodied sword Dawn, the ancestral sword which was forged from a fallen star. Does Dawn covered in blood counts? Yeah, I think it does. It's also important to highlight a few other facts, like for an example when Melisandre looks into the fire to see Azra High, Melisandre only sees things related to either Jon or Snow, Jon Snow. The second thing that is also important to highlight is Jon's dream that he dreamed in the books, the dream in which he fights the others, the White Walkers with a red sword burning in his hand. The only thing that Jon did not achieve, or at least not yet, is awakening dragons from the stone. I don't know if all of this is only a coincidence, or Jon is really Azra High reborn in the Promised Prince, but in my opinion there is also possibility and proof of Azra High being female instead of male. The prophecy was originally made using the Valyrian word for dragons, which is neither male or female, meaning that Azra High may be reborn as a female as well. Let's see if Danny has more matches to be Azra High. Let's focus on possible proof that Danny is Azra High. The prophecy fits Danny perfectly. She was born at Dragonstone, an island in the narrow sea, meaning that we have the salt from the waves hitting the shores of Dragonstone, and also she was reborn as the mother of dragons on Khal Drogo's burning funeral bonfire, 
which matches with the part of the prophecy which includes a mid smoke. On that bonfire, Danny's three dragon eggs hatched, which fits perfectly in part of the prophecy which says born amid smoke and soul to wake dragons from stone. Also, very important fact is that on that morning, for the first time, the red comet appeared on the sky, which fits the part that says when the stars bleed. For the final confirmation of Danny being Azra High, we have an additional prophecy from the Woods of Witch, prophesied that the prince that was promised will be born from the line of Ares and Rella. As we all know, this prophecy also fits Danny perfectly, since Danny is the daughter of Ares and Rella. When Samuel Tarly told to Mace Raymond the rumors about Danny Targaryen and her dragons, Aemon became sure that Danny is the prophesied leader. In the book, Aemon told to Sam, no one ever looked for a girl. It was a prince that was promised, not a princess. And also told Sam that Danny is the chosen one, born amid smoke and salt. The dragons prove it. Yes, the prophesied hero that will save Westeros could be Jon or Danny. However, I don't think any of the characters we have in the current timeline is the prophesied savior. I believe Azor Ahai was actually Rhaegar Targaryen, whom fans have often heard of and finally saw in season 7. I'm sure you're wondering, doesn't the prince that was promised have to be alive? How will he defeat the Night King if he's dead? Well, according to this theory, he'll defeat the Night King the same way the original Azor Ahai did, with his fabled weapon Lightbringer. Except in this case, Lightbringer is not a sword, but rather a person named Jon Snow. In his youth, Rhaegar Targaryen himself actually believed that he was the prophesied prince, and so did his great-great-uncle Mace Raymond, before they both became convinced that the savior was actually Rhaegar's son Aegon instead. Rhaegar, I thought. The smoke was from the fire that devoured Summerhall on the day of his birth, the soul from the tears shed for those who died. He shared my belief when he was young, but later he became persuaded that it was his own son who fulfilled the prophecy, for a comet had been seen above King's Landing on the night Aegon was conceived, and Rhaegar was certain the bleeding star had to be a comet. What fools we were, we thought ourselves so wise, said Mace Raymond in a feast of crowds. In case you don't know, Rhaegar was born at the Targaryen summer place Summerhall. Shortly after Rhaegar's birth, the palace was consumed by a great fire, which claimed the lives of King Aegon V, Mace Raymond's brother, the king's son and heir, and the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard. The tragedy is one of the more intriguing backstories in A Song of Ice and Fire, given its unexplained nature. Perhaps George R. R. Martin has been withholding details until a timely twist that reveals how the tragedy of the Summerhall helps fulfill the prophecy of Azor Ahai, namely that Danny's older brother was literally born amid smoke and salt. As we all know, Azor Ahai is said to be born amid smoke and salt, and as Mace Raymond said, Rhaegar Targaryen does fulfill the prophecy. He was born in Summerhall on the very same day the castle burned to the ground. So there's the smoke, but what about the salt? That day the kingdom also lost the current king at the time, a prince and the captain of the king's guard. As Mace Raymond pointed out, those deaths did lead to many tears, and tears are salty. An additional prophecy from a wood switch prophesied that the prince was promised would be born from the line of Prince Aerys and Princess Rella. Rhaegar is the son of Aerys and Rella. However, the fact that Rhaegar became convinced that his son had a role to play in the prophecy may not be far off. The man had a brother's hair, but he was taller and his eyes were a dark indigo rather than lilac. Aegon, he said to a woman nursing a newborn babe in a great wooden bed. What better name for a king? Will you make a song for him? The woman asked. He has a song, the man replied. He is the prince that was promised, and his is the song of ice and fire. Then his vision of past in a clash of kings. Of course, fans know that the baby Rhaegar was talking about was his first son Aegon, but Aegon's life ended during the sack of King's Landing, when the mountain smashed his head against the wall, killed his sister Rhaenys and her mother, Alaya Martell. As Game of Thrones taught us, the prophecies can be tricky, and while Rhaegar had the basics right, he was off in two key ways. He considered the wrong son to be the prophesied prince, and the right son is not actually the prince, but rather a weapon. Ironically, it turns out that he was right the first time, he himself was Azor Ahai all along. According to a legend, Azor Ahai had to try three times before successfully forging his flaming sword, Lightbringer. On third attempt, he realized he would have to sacrifice the thing he loved the most in his world. To successfully create a weapon, he had to kill his beloved wife, Nisa Nisa, who was said to cry out in both anguish and ecstasy when Azor Ahai tempered the blade by driving it into her heart. Similarly, Jon Snow was Rhaegar's third child, third attempt, and this creation resulted in the death of Rhaegar's beloved wife, Lena Stark, who could be heard by her brother Eddard crying out in anguish and ecstasy from inside the Tower of Joy as she was giving birth to her son. So to summarize, Rhaegar was born amid smoke and salt. He forged his ultimate weapon on its third attempt when he'd sacrificed his wife, and Jon has since become a literal lightbringer, a sword of fire. 
Most assume that the part about Lightbringer means that the original Azrahai killed his lover with an actual sword, and the sacrifice then imbued the sword with enough magical power that it could drive back the darkness. But don't you think that would be too simple and too literal? Here Azrahai kills his lover with his other sword, reference which George R. Marne usually uses in his books. By wielding the power of that sword, Rhaegar ultimately created a new weapon, forged with a loving wife's heart. The end product is a super weapon capable of destroying the Night King for good. Instead of a magical flaming sword, this weapon is Jhani himself. There are clues hidden throughout the show about this, true nature of Lightbringer's forging. George R. Marne uses the image of a man stabbing a woman with his sword as a metaphor for an intimate relationship elsewhere in the books. Perhaps the most prominent example of this would be a conversation between Theon and Barbie Dustin in A Dance with Dragons. Brandon loved his sword, he loved to hone it. I've only sharp enough to shave the hair from a woman's scalp, he used to say. And how he loved to use it. A bloody sword is a beautiful thing, he told me once. At the end it turns out that while fans have been eagerly waiting for the revelation of Estro's savior, that hero's time has come and gone. Rhaegar Targaryen did not stab Lyanna through the heart because he interpreted the Azrahai prophecy correctly. The forging of Lightbringer is referring to conceiving and birthing of a child. Rhaegar fulfilled his destiny when he created a sword in the darkness, Lightbringer Jon Snow. A few months ago I found one more hint, from the official Game of Thrones history and lore series. If you look closely on this shot, which is part of HBO's histories and lore series, of short animated videos included in Blu-ray releases of each TV season of Game of Thrones, you will notice a rose above Azra Hai and Issa Nisa. Could it be Lyanna's Winter Rose, hinting that Lyanna was in fact Rhaegar's Nisa Nisa and Rhaegar was Azra Hai. As we all know, Lyanna Stark was very fond of blue Winter Roses. During the tourney at Harrenhal, Prince Rhaegar named Lyanna the Queen of Love and Beauty, giving her a garland of blue roses. Even the statue of Lyanna at her tomb underneath Winterfell is holding a garland of blue winter roses. In my opinion, this rose above Azra High can be considered as a hidden hint that is going favor to Rhaegar being Azra High, Lyanna being Nissa Nissa and their son John Aegon being the Lightbringer. After all, this show is literally the Song of Ice and Fire, the melody that Rhaegar composed when he created his son, who would go on to become the weapon that will kill the Night King and save all of Westeros from the Long Night. I'm curious to hear your thoughts about this theory in the comment section down below. Do you agree with this or do you think someone else is destined to save Westeros from the Long Night? Let me know. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.